Azalea from floridacinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create a nice ball and intro in Adobe After Effects. But first I wanted to tell something to my subscribers. If you are subscribed to this channel and you don't get notifications from my videos or you don't see them in your feed, it's a common problem uh, that YouTube is having right now. Well, actually YouTube is doing it on purpose. Uh, but if you still want to see all my videos, uh, well, I upload daily, that's one thing. But if you want to get a notification when I upload a video, you can go to my channel next to the subscribe on the right top you can see in uh, like an alarm bell and if you click on there you can uh, select says uh, you can select to see the notifications for this channel so if you want that and uh, there you go and apart from that if you don't wish to follow this tutorial like always you can buy the project files with the link in the description or if you want to support the YouTube channel and yeah let's get started with the tutorial for those that do want to follow this tutorial and yeah see you in After Effects Alright, so here we are in After Effects and I will be showing you how to recreate that ball and intro which is pretty cool, it's a clean intro, really easy to create but sometimes the most simplistic things are the best things to use in your projects. Um, okay, so let's get started. The first thing that I will do is create a new composition main comp and I will press OK just make sure it's full HD um, around 10 seconds long and yeah just uh, fit it up to 100% right here then I will go right here and pick my rectangle tool and I will just um, make sure that it has a stroke but no fill so um, for the fill we'll click on the actual name fill um, cancel this go to fill right here and just make sure you don't have any fill here and for the stroke we're going to pick a white color uh, with a width of something like 10 now we're going to drag out um, a rectangle just like this and of course if you hold space you can actually reposition it and put it in place uh, around here depending on whatever you want uh, you can release it right here now we can go to the align tool here and uh, the align tab if you don't see that window align right here and we can just center this out so uh, that you're sure that it's 100% centered once you have done that, we can actually toggle it down and everything, all the settings for that shape. We can open it up again. And open up the rectangle here. And open up the um, transform. Well, I will make this a little bit bigger here. And we have a few options. If we um, go for the path and the stroke, you can see a lot of cool things here that we can change. Uh, for example, uh, you can add dashes here, stroke width. You can still change it right here. So maybe 7 is a little bit better. Or, uh, no, something like 12 maybe. 12 is okay. Here you can select the direction of your path. I will change it so we'll, um, make, uh, we'll make it reverse here. And then right here I will also add something. So you have a bunch of things that you can add which is pretty cool. Um, I will go for trim path and if I click on that I can animate the um, path length here. So if we open that up we can uh, go for the start. We can animate it like this. So we'll go 100% at the start and at the beginning of my timeline I will cl click on the stopwatch to create a new keyframe. And then I will move something like two seconds and I will uh, make this zero. So now we have this animation. Really simple. Um, I will select my two keyframes, right click keyframe assistance, easy ease and then I will jump into my graph editor right here and I will make sure that I'm using the uh, edit speed graph here and I will start off quite fast and well maybe also a little bit slower and just end really slow so I uh, will drag this in here so we have a curve like this and I'm going to press 0 I will get something like this uh, which is pretty cool I wanted to end right here so what I can do is offset it here uh, you can see can offset it and actually we will go to the beginning of my timeline click on the keyframe I will on stopwatch for offset and around five seconds I will also animate it just a little bit and now uh, we're going to see that it's also moving a little bit here so it gives it a little bit more life um, as you can see so now we have something like this uh, okay that's great we'll close everything down close the graph editor and now we can actually add our text so go to the text tool and I'm going to write something like Tolerated Cinematics. I will use the font Lado. So I will search that font. And for my first part, I'll make it bold, um, bold here. And the second part, I'll make it light. There we go. So now we have a nice design title. I will move my title right here in the middle of my rectangle. And I will make it a little bit bigger. Make sure it starts from the center. 
uh, around here and then also align it like so and just make maybe put it one pixel above so it's uh, nicely centered uh, in here so now we have our text in uh, the middle what we'll do is go to the beginning of my timeline click on the text go to effects and presets search for text close it down uh, well search for text um, text okay there we go so now we have the folder text I'm going to close this down and open it up again and then you will see all the folders that you have right here open up uh, animate in and what I want to use is actually the characters fade in so um, fade up characters that's right here I'm going to drag that on my text and now my characters are going to well, actually fade up um, I didn't want that I want them to be random so uh, let's search a little bit further random fade up right here I'm going to drag this onto my text now I have something like this which is pretty cool it can be a little bit faster so I will press U on the keyboard while this layer is selected just move this to one second also for the shape I'm going to move this a little bit faster so now we have something like this our text pops up randomly and our mask gets made uh, which is pretty cool um, I'm going to duplicate my text layer and I'm going to open up the text uh, right here so we see source text I'm going to do the same thing for the other text well actually yeah it's not going to work like this um, okay so I will alt click on the second text layer alt click on the stopwatch I'm going to pick with the source text and so now what it's going to do is if you change this text um, it's going to automatically change that other, uh, other text to the same text um, that's basically it um, but we don't want it to be right here so we'll scale it up a little bit like so for example move it down and we can actually uh, just lock it so uh, we don't accidentally click on it uh, when we are trying to change the text right here so now if I click on here it's going to be the background text and if I change this you will see that um, the other text also uh, changes right here on this text well before we actually lock it um, we need to actually um, also random fade up here so add a random fade up and now we're going to get something like this you can actually press U on the keyboard and just disable the keyframes so we don't need any keyframes we just want the text to be there and it has a little bit of a part of this text I'm going to scale it up maybe position it right over here and I'm going to lower the opacity to something like 10 then go to effects and presets blur and sharpen add a Gaussian blur here and I'm going to add like 50% blur for example maybe the opacity to something like 5 depending on what you want and maybe you can uh, just animate it slightly uh, with a random fade up so well actually we have the random fade up let's uh, search it um, that's right here and actually what I want to do is um, from 10 to um, 30 for example and now it's going to fade up really slowly in the background and we have some uh, animation going on there I'm going to duplicate that text and just position it right over here and then also open it up and maybe play with um, animation here well actually we have two animation uh, animators um, so we can delete the first one I think or okay we're going to work with the second one doesn't really matter right now uh, but I want to change the randomness so if I open this up we can actually offset it here um, go into advanced and just change the random seed right here so we get something different um, on the bottom so now you can position it a little bit better uh, depending on whatever you prefer so, but now we have some some life in the background while this is happening as well so that's also pretty cool what I will do now is just duplicate my private um, my shape layer here actually and I will go um, and make it a little bit thicker so I will jump into the content rectangle stroke and change the stroke to something like 15 or maybe 17 and then I will jump into my other rectangle we will go to the rectangle also the stroke and change the color to a different color so maybe um, a yellow kind of color something like this and if we're going to animate this we're not going to see anything because it's actually the same timing we just want this to offset a little bit so that we can see the beginning and then right here you will see the beginning uh, but because we're almost at the end you're not going to see a big difference but like for example 
right here, you can see that it's pretty long. And now we have this kind of animation. And immediately, because of the color that you add, it gives a lot more vibrance to uh, everything. So uh, you can go ahead and change your text maybe right here. Well, actually, see, you have to lock them and then you can just click on this text and nothing gets broken then again. Uh, we can also pick a yellow color for the text, for example. And that's also pretty cool. Now we have something like this. So uh, it's really simple to recreate uh, this part. Um, and also for the next part, actually, I'm going to toggle my switches and make everything a 3D and lock them 3D layer and lock them again. And then I will add a camera to my scene here. So add a camera 50 or 35. Click OK. Press P on the keyboard for that position of a camera. Click on the stopwatch for and that camera and also move that keyframe to around three seconds and then go to the beginning and just make sure that you um, well zoom in actually so now we zoom in and we get this so that's pretty cool um, maybe zoom in a little bit more so we actually really fly through this okay and then we're going to, for the position go to the graph editor also change the speed value and show graph editor there we go okay and just um, well, actually, I want it to be right here. Ah, okay, um, I must have uh, made a mistake with the animation here, but yeah, just make sure that you actually zoom out here. Um, select this and just drag it in like so. And at the beginning, we can keep it pretty simple like this. And now we get something like this. So it's really fast at the beginning. Well, it speeds up right here. It's at its peak. And then it's going to slow down uh, really nicely. So it's uh, integrating. Um, a little bit better it's it's coming smooth uh, well it's coming to a smooth stop so that's actually what we're after and yeah apart from that it's basically it uh, in my preview you could see that um, I use a little bit of glitch um, that glitch is made with uh, the epic glitch intro for example I would definitely recommend you to check it out if you haven't already to uh, add a little bit of glitch effects uh, to give it a little bit more life even um, but yeah that's um, a pretty cool result I think so hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more thank you so much for watching and yeah goodbye